Good morning. Today we are going to be doing hornet traps. So they'll be looking like this when they're all put together. The ones you saw me use last year. They work really well. I've mixed up the the bait for them and I've got a load that I've cleaned. There's a lot, I think the last three or four they've got were washed out from last year, but most of them are done. So I've got to put all those back together and then when I go to an apiary this afternoon. But first, we are going to admire this amazing wisteria. You ignore the barrels, <laughs> lol. <laughs> Look at that, stunning. We are going to make a cell builder and stock a cell builder today. So I've got this old box I'm going to use because it's very easy to use this box because I was actually going to paint it. But to make it cell builder ready, I'm going to remove three of these cremelier or uh, lugs each side. And I'm also going to remove the support frames. The reason why is because I push my frames together, the three frames, pollen, pollen and graft, so I can push them up together so the bees can crowd around more. When I remove this inner wire, it's actually pretty easy to do. I just do it like this and it comes out. You can see the propolis that they put into these hives as they bees gunk it all up. But I, we don't need this in the hive. I don't, it is good to have, to be honest, when you're using it as a standard hive. Because if you ever move it and you're doing mo removals, any jolting will stop potentially that queen getting crushed. But when you're using it as a cell builder and you're not moving the box much, you don't need to because this top is hopelessly queenless anyway. So now I'm going to grind these three off and get that done. So don't forget when you're doing any grinding with a grinder, you always want to wear your safety goggles. So I've got mine on. So that is done, three frames off. So obviously I'm gonna stock this as a cell builder today and it's gonna have 10 frames of boot, a brood in it. And as the flow is on, I'm gonna put a super underneath and a super above because I just, I'm going uh, to be away next week till uh, I think Friday, we we'll go away Tuesday, come back Friday. So I can graph the day after I get back. That's the whole idea of being organized. So uh, this will be able to take the frames, but they'll all be individually spaced as per normal, just, just with this, the lugs missing for now. But I'll use that later on when I put the cells in to be, um, to be, gro to be uh, accepted. I'm also going to quickly fit some handles to this box because they weigh a ton when you are trying to um, lift it off the top of the other box. So I always do the handles as well. It would have been easier to use a hive, but as this was here, I've got spare handles to hand. Literally, I can grab them straight away and put them on, which I'll show you. So these are the handles I use. And I'm using uh, five by 25 screws, which are absolutely brilliant for this. We get all our screws from uh, this company called Secat. C-E-C-A-T-R-E, -E, and you can find it at secatpointcom.com. They're really good screws. They are square-headed screws. I really like these. They're really good to use. Job done. 
Handles are on. I put them in the front and the back. It makes it easier for me. And we're grinded up. So we're ready to use this as a cell builder. Everything is there I need. I'm also going to take some frames of foundation with me and put them in now so that as I take the frames out of a colony, I'll be able to replace it with foundation. And it's good to do that this time of year because it also is a good way of quickly checking the colony, seeing what it's doing, seeing if it's going to swarm, and also using some of that brood you've made in your brood factories. So let's go down to the bottom of the garden and make this cell builder up. So we are down the bottom of the garden and I hope you can hear this all good. So cell builders, how do you choose what colony is going to be your cell builder? Well here is a prime example of what I would choose to be a cell builder. It's just to note while I'm here as well that things have finally seemed to have calmed down a bit. The bees have not lost their rush but they're almost so full of nectar and so full of um, uh, they're kind of satisfied to, that they've almost maybe caught up. Just having a look at this one super here. And I'm going to have to put a second super on here. This is like, this is full. You know? This is unreal. You see all this wax? The white wax has been built between. All oh, that's the brand new frames. The bees are really nice here, generally. That's why I'm going to use this one as the cell builder. But you see what's happening here, look. They're building that well. I'm not going to put a second super on here, but this is going to go above the cell builder. But they are working like crazy. Absolutely fantastic. A little bit less that one. So there's plenty of room in this super still. But there's a nice lot of nectar going in, that's for sure. So let's just have a look at what our nectar is at the moment. We've still got all the cherries, you can see I've got domestic cherries there. There's um, apple trees are just starting. We've got the Malus sylvestris, the crab apples. And this is my hawthorn, you see. I was trying to tell someone the other day that actually my hawthorn is coming in flower, but it's not the vast majority. So you could, but there is absolutely loads of buds coming. You can see that it's all about to explode. This, as I always say, will be the last thing that we see flowering. And when this flowers here, it signals the end of the flow. But we've got at least two weeks yet of really good flow if the weather basically carries on being reasonable. And at the moment, it's actually a little bit cooler today. But you can see it's beautiful. It's sunny. It's calm. There's a little bit of breeze on the top of that tree, but nothing to stop bees flying. You know, so, but this is the weird thing as well. Look, the oaks are just coming into flower now. And that's the lime tree there. There's not even any leaves out on it. And I've got chestnut here that's completely bare. So we're still relatively early. This is, I don't fall over. <laughs> this is a common sycamore, Asa pseudoplatinus. That's not in flower yet. That gives a lot of nectar as well. Another one here. And here we've got oaks, as I said. The oaks are just unfurling their catkins. You can see as soon as the leaves come out, there's the catkins on the oaks. That's the catkins there, you can see. It's pretty cool actually, because they, oaks are kind of overlooked. I mentioned this last year that they're not, you know, people don't realize how much pollen oaks give. I don't know if they give much nectar. I know they can give honey during the summer, but they don't really give much nectar. But pollen is good. You can see the mini plus here are massive now. I had to, I had, to add extra bodies onto them yesterday. They're growing in size. Inside here I've got, there's just like loads of bees. Right in the top now, look, I mean, they're just getting to the point now. I just hope I can hold them off for another week or so. That was the frame I put in yesterday. The frames, and they're building these out already, look instantly. Absolutely amazing. It's amazing what happens when a flow is on, isn't it? I mean, it just, they just, they're forgiving the bees, they rebuild everything. Look at that, it's already got nectar in it. That's just 24 hours. You can see they haven't built the one up next door because it needs rebuilding more, but there's white wax in the top, look. It's just absolutely. I'm glad I came here because this was the one that was a bit loose, so I can just push this 
in a little bit, like I said, and just make sure that they've got to reposition that frame a little bit so the wax a bit. It's held in at the side already, so it just pushes it down a bit. No eggs in that frame yet, but they're going to fill that with honey because it's the top. But it just gives them that extra space so I can get queens raised before I start splitting these up to raise a load of queens, hopefully. So, but we shall see as we say. There's actually a, a, a polystyrene insert and that, so those bees you saw in the middle weren't going to get squashed, don't worry. But let's make this cell builder up now, because I am di digressing. I mean, just look at that sky. It's absolutely beautiful. And look at that yellow over there. Can you see that in line with that pole? That's the all seed rate. That's one of my closest ones, but it's a massive field that. There is others just as close though, so we shall see. It's good. So I'm going to put my box on top of this colony, but first I'm going to check in this colony to see if there's any cells, because you must check your cell builders first, because you cannot have a cell in a cell builder. It wouldn't matter so much in this one, because the cells will be beneath the excluder. So there's my excluder here already. But because I don't want this to swarm, I want it to be massive, and I don't want half the bees to go in a few days, I want to check for cells now, just in case. You can see the passage of bees here is pretty impressive. And don't think I can take I can take brood from all these colonies if I want to to stock this one to make it stronger. But I'm probably going to concentrate on the ones over there first so they get checked because they're strong as well. And also I've got a, a really good breeder queen that I'm going to take some bees from because that, that's on double super. So I want to make sure that she's not going into swarm mode because I need her in the next few weeks before my new breeder queen arrives this year. So it's all a case of juggling around today and getting this shit done. But I can already smell that hawthorn. Look at that. It's absolutely rich, the smell. But the bees aren't on that at the moment yet. It's just that's another thing for after. So I was going to attempt to make this cell builder up without gloves on, and I'm going to see what happens because the weather's so nice and I've got some okay-ish bees, but it's probably famous last words. So the same old thing I'm going to use the top of a roof to put my super on. Don't put your supers on the ground because they get bits of grass stuck to them. It's just a pain. So let's take this off. A little bit of weight in there now, which is good, but it came off pretty easily. You can see, oh, there's a good bit of weight in there. If they're all like that, I'll tell you, I'll be happy when I come to harvest. At least I'll have some honey. I've got a little bit of smoke. Let's have a look in this build, in this colony and see what it's looking like. Hopefully after I've added the queen excluder the last few days the colony won't be flooded with nectar. Because I don't want it to be absolutely sopping with nectar and I don't want to... Oh, this is much lighter this frame. This is good. There's lovely eggs in there. That's immediately a good sign to me that this is nowhere near swarming. There is a cup there, small cup with nothing in it, that's good. This queen shouldn't be swarming anyway because she was new last year. I think she's a white dot queen. You can see it, I don't know if you can see the eggs in there. There's, well, she's not a white dot, but she's a new queen. There she is, laying. Look at that, how fluky was that? I'm actually gonna quickly mark her now because I've got the marking kit here and it's perfect time to do that. And to be honest, if anything happened to her because I've marked her, it makes no difference whatsoever because the colony will still will still get uh, bigger and still be a good cell builder even if the queen did the dirty on me. So let's get her marked. Look at the size of her abdomen there, very nice. You can hold her in the apiary like that, just between your fingers. If you want to walk around with her while you're getting your gear out. But I always turn her this way when I'm marking her because it means that you won't mark the antenna. So I can hold her like that while I mark her. If you can, oh, I'm just moving away for you, sorry. So you can hold her like that. Just tend to wiggle her around until I've got her in my fingers like this. 
and you can hold her easily when you're ready to mark her. I'm just going to mark her now because it makes life so much easier. See so if I can mark her reasonably tidily. Well, I won't miss her. But I didn't get any paint on the antenna. And after you've marked her, you can just hold her by the wings if you want until she's dry. Or you can put her in a queen clip. But she's marked now. So I'm just going to hold her for a few seconds before I put her back in the colony because I don't want to upset the other bees. I want to make sure the paint's dry. And put her back in. When you put a queen back in, you can rest her on your finger like that and see she grips with her front feet and she wants to go forward. So when you put her in a colony, I'm going to put her this side for the moment, out the way. But this is a nice gap there, so I'm going to force her down this gap. Show her the way first. Show her in, and off she goes, you see. And she's gone the right way. She hasn't flown or anything. Now, I don't think she was going to fly anyway because um, she's not in really flying much. She's not flighty. But So let's have a look at this frame. This is the one we just looked, took out. I'll take this out again. Just have another quick look. But there's loads of eggs on this, which is absolutely marvellous. I'm going to leave that out for a few seconds and put it on the floor, just on its side, so I can quickly look at the other part of the colony and check that everything is good. Bit congestion there, a lot of pollen as well, but, most, but mostly brood. Look at that, this is just bumper frames, you know. Beautiful. Another frame of brood there. This is the kind of thing I want as a cell builder because they're lovely and calm. You know, we've seen the queen. Look at that pollen. There's almost, I could almost take that to be a pollen frame, but we'll see what happens when I make the builder up. I haven't got a pollen frame ready yet, and I am going to mix up some pollen sub. You see the amount of pollen in that one? Almost too much. But they've got room. There's no sign of any swarming imminently. So I can pretty much relax once I've got this cell builder ready and just come back and check it all again when I make it up, which I'll show you me doing again. Brood everywhere. Beautiful colony. What's not to like, you know? More pollen. Almost too much pollen, but it doesn't matter. We'll be okay for now. There, I'm also going to be making some splits up after this, so it'd be a good time to take out some pollen from colonies and put them into nuke so you have food for... There's the nice drone frame. Look at the back of the colony. Number two frame, often. This is absolutely classic, where they knock up some drones. So I'm going to be really careful here. Because I know the queen is on number one, where I put her. Hopefully she'll be fine. This is a very heavy honey frame. See if I can see her here. Now she's obviously gone somewhere else, but that's fine. She may have crawled on the wall or something, but all that is good. So I'm not particularly fussed, but that is, I could take this frame out and put in nectar, but I'm going to be giving a super to the colony, an extra super as well when I put the builder on, because I do not want this colony to swarm, just to keep it, everything uncongested. So as long as the bees are doing their job, everything will be fine and dandy. But I see no cells, no sign of cells. We found the queen. We know she's marked now. Good. Everything goes nicely back in.
Okay, I'm happy with that. Very. Pollen. Pollen. So much pollen. What a beautiful colony. I only wish they were all like this, but hey ho, such is life. Not moaning in the slightest. So let's put this one. Back in there. And the other frame was, I'm just gonna check this frame again, which I didn't check, I don't think, first time around. Okay, we've got lots of brood, beautiful, and some drone. Number two again, excellent. And on number one. So let's pop that other frame back in. So that colony is now checked. We can add frames of brood to it to make it super strong. But first, we're gonna put the super back on it. And then we're gonna add the box above the super. But I'm gonna put a super on top of the box I add because I need to be sure that it's not gonna plug it up. But the other thing to remember is what bees will do is they will definitely fill up the brood frames as they hatch out because they're above the excluder. So that will give them extra storage. So that now goes on top. We don't need an excluder above it, do we? Because we've already got one here, okay? This is spring, so we need to keep that nectar managed. So I've just stocked the first frame. The bees are gonna come up there already, look. Up they come from the bottom and they'll be warming that frame. But I've got this slide on piece of card that I use. So when I wanna add the next frame, I'll just slide it back and add the next one. It's the easiest thing to do because it doesn't affect the colony. You don't have to take the top off. It just keeps the bees where they are. I've just checked this one. So let's go and see what I've just done. First of all, I wanna take you to my breeder queen that I mentioned the other day that I gave an extra super to. Well, it's unbelievable the flow, how it's running here. Because as well as all these dandelions coming out, they're not even on them, the bees. I just wanted to show you this. I've actually had to add another super to my breeder queen because the first two are more than three quarters full. It's unbelievable. So we've got a Dadent 10 frame box there, another super in the middle, just above the, just above the brood nest because these two are nearly full. And the reason why I've added another super is the brood nest is still becoming congested and the queen is trying to throw a few cells. Now, the reason why also she's trying to throw a few cells is because it's her... First of all, look at the nectar on the floor. Can you see it glistening in the sun? That's just what I've just shaken out some of the frames. What I was saying before was the reason why she's trying to throw a super seeder cell is because it's now her third season. She was made 2020. She did, she was here in the autumn, built up hugely, 2020 winter, 2021 last year. She had an amazing year. She was on double brood box in the spring and then I grafted from her loads and loads and loads. And that's a lot of her daughters now that I've got flying around. And also this, so expect, I expect her to, to basically to be superseded or, which isn't a problem because I've had my money's worth out of her. You know, I'd like to keep her for another year, but I don't think she's going to stay in that condition. But at the moment she's still firing on all four cylinders. And I'm going to hopefully have her ready for grafting. That's why I've given her space. So I, I took two frames of brood from that brood box, two complete frames, because the brood box was full. The top next two supers were full. So I put a super in the middle and I've given them two frames of foundation. So that will depressurize that colony a little bit. Just keep them going over for what all I wanted to do. So when I go away, before I go away in four days time, I'm gonna put some frames of uh, drawn comb in so she can lay in them. So when I come back, the larvae will be hatching out. Perfect timing to um, be doing some grafting. So even all the fruit trees I pruned, they're all starting to come out. 
just nice. I hacked this one back and all of these here, they're all looking great. We've actually got some blossom coming. It's early for apples a little bit, but the, bring, the nice weather's brought it on. So, you know, we might have some fruit still, that's good. Cherry's just about finished, it got a bit blasted, but you see the internal, the internal flowers are still there, which is amazing. Shows how so much there is. So let's go over to the cell builder I've just stocked. I've looked at almost every single colony here. They're all good. Some of them have had a second super on. Like that one there, that one over there, one behind me. It's absolutely fantastic. But this cell builder is now full. So it was no problem at all finding enough frames of bees and brew, but I'm glad I stopped for as long as I did. And you can see now that the bees have come up and they've, they're keeping these frames warm as though it was their own. So we can put the proper cover on that. The bees on this side you see are already back to work. The ones on this side, because it was, one uh, well, standing in the way probably that's what it is, but the passage of bees is incredible. But the ones on the right, this cell build are a little bit slower because I've been messing with hive for so long. They haven't got back to their rhythm. But every one of these is a nice frame of brood. So I'm really pleased. Look at all that, you know, stuff like that that's all gonna hatch out. And they'll backfill that with honey, I know, but I'm gonna put another super on top of here as well to make sure that they've got enough room to store honey because I don't want to um, run out of space and then make the queen underneath feel she's got to go into swarm mode because I don't want her to swarm really. I know it's unlikely now she'd go in the next four or five days because the weather isn't gonna hold as good as it is now, but you obviously want to cater for all eventualities in the big picture. So that cell builder is now ready. I can leave it alone now knowing that the numbers are increasing hugely as, I'm, as I I'll mark the date and the time. I'm actually gonna mark it on the box, the date today. And then I'll know that in 10 days time that builder will, will be ready. But however, I probably will use it in seven to eight days. Okay, because I know a little bit about cell builders now and I know that even if there's a little bit of hatching brood, it won't make much difference. But we work on 10 days to leave the brood to hatch because that's the time that it would take for everything to hatch. But in my experience though, it doesn't matter too much as long as the vast majority is hatched because all I want to do is get cells started. So um, I'm going to be really busy, really busy, like ridiculously busy when I come. I'm so I'm going to the UK for three days next week, which is not ideal, but it's the best time for me to go because it's like a little pause now while the next is going in. We'll check all the supers Monday and Tuesday. I'm away Tuesday night as much as we can. There will be a few swarms that go, but that's what it, you know, it is what it is with that thing. Um, you can only do so much. You can't be everywhere all the time. And then when I come back, I'll be grafting. And then about a week after that, I'll be starting to um, extract honey. And then I've also got to make splits. So it's going to be ridiculously crazy busy, as it always is, but just more. So I've um, got a super here that I'm going to put on just to be extra. So we have brood box with the queen in, a queen excluder, a super to, current, to cope with the current flow, a brood box full of 10 frames of brood, soon to be 10 frames of just bees and no uh, unhatched, unhatched bees and no brood in that section. And then this top bit will be the buffer if I need it. And when I come to use the cell builder, I'll shake out the bees if there's many in here and use and then condense them into there, put this super on somewhere else and then I'll start making this box because don't forget this is the box that I'll be building with when I make my cell builder. The bottom box will be moved away and this will be in its place on a new base. That's how it works. We're artificially swarming this queen in its place. We're putting a box that's just got hatched bee frames. There's no actual larvae or brood, so we make it hopelessly queenless. I love that word, hopelessly queenless, because it takes a lot of people time to understand what hopelessly queenless really is. And it can only mean one thing, and it can only mean that the queen has gone, the bees have no other way of making a new queen. There's no eggs, there's no larvae, there's nothing they can make a new queen from, so they're hopelessly queenless and they have to use what you give them. Bingo. In go your graphs. Out come the most beautiful cells you could ever wish for. Do it. It's so easy. Have a go. Anyway, while I'm waxing about the benefits of 
cell building. I'm now going to go off to finish another apiary because I haven't finished there and I've got to just through a couple of transfers. They're late transfers um, that I did, so they're not huge. What I mean is that there are a little, there's a few boxes that are a little bit slow in growing, which is fine. So I've left them tactically so that I don't have to. Yes, I know this is a wonky, wonky roof, but it is what it is. That's just sometimes how it works. These are eights and they're slightly bigger than the old, than my tens. Okay. So yes, I'm off to do that, that other apron. And then I'm, after that, I'm actually up straight. And then I have to start it all again and get as much done before on the second tour before I go away. And there'll be mess everywhere and I'll get delayed. But that's just what beekeeping is. So uh, I hope you are getting some nectar and some, uh, some honey into your supers. If you're not, I hope it's not too dire. I hope you're managing to get prepared and get ready for the season. Because I know most people are kind of starting now. We always start about end of March, April, which is, is kind of exactly what we'd expect this time of year. So it's all good. It's all progressing well. And I hope you're getting some good results like that yourself. Go okay, speak to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.